So today I'm, I want to um, spend a little bit of time talking about Astro, which is our um, cloud-based managed service based on Airflow and or orchestration that we've been working on at uh, uh, Astronomer over the last year. So I'll tell you a little bit about uh, why we built it and what problems we're trying to, to solve. Um, so I know most of you are well aware of Astronomer. Um, just real brief, briefly for those uh, who may not be, we've been around for a few years and um, just a couple of months ago um, announced our Series C uh, funding with a, a bunch of great investors there. And we've been really um, growing rapidly, especially in the last uh, uh, year or two. And at Astronomer, it's really about uh, airflow and, and being huge computer contributors and supporters of the open source community. So I know uh, all of you know about Ash and Caxel and Andrew Godman, Daniel, Jed Beckram, everyone, uh, lots of people on the team who are involved there and are a key, key part of the, the company. Um, and then we're also the commercial providers of Airflow. And what we've been looking at uh, in, the, in the last year uh, with Astro is how to have a uh, cloud-based managed service that solves a lot of the problems that are out there and how do we uh, enable lots of pe more people uh, to use um, Airflow and have a greater uh, orchestration uh, experience. Um, you'll be hearing more announcements about this uh, soon, um, but it is already live. And so you can, um, maybe after the talk, if you're interested, you can uh, go to our uh, website and, and take a further look at um, as well. Um, and then before um, getting started to just a little bit uh, about myself. So um, my background's in uh, fault tolerant distributed systems and web services. So this is way back in the day in the late 90s uh, and the dot-com days. I was at UCLA, um, did a bunch of um, research there. And uh, then I moved to, um, when I graduated to ask.com, I uh, worked on um, data systems and actually web started with web search and new search there and then I got my start into the you know, data um, ecosystem over there heading the data, data team there and then as Yark was mentioning um, in the before astronomer um, over the last nine years I was, I was at uh, electronic arts I headed the data and AI engineering team there that was helping um, all the studios and games there um, leverage and use data so probably uh, one of the largest, if not the largest uh, data systems in the in the gaming world. And then I joined Astronomer just about a year ago as a P of engineering heading our uh, cloud team and working on the on Astro and managed service. Um, and the reason I, I tell you about my background uh, a bit is uh, there's really a, a common trend that's that's been happening um, in, in industry and, and, and really about orchestration and the need to have managed orchestration. So if you look at, um, what has been happening in the last uh, um, 10 or 15 years, especially, um, if you got just almost any business that's been able to grow and succeed and become something huge, it's uh, really you have data as in the foundation and it's really a data-driven business. And not, not about just search or um, e-commerce or social networks that we all know about or, or even games, but, but really a, any kind of retailer, even as small shoe store chain or oil and gas industry, financials, anything you think about, data is really at the core and it's become more and more critical. Um, and some of that has also been driven by the rise of the cloud services out there with the uh, public cloud companies really making um, um, compute and storage much cheaper and easier to use. Uh, and a lot of services that have then been built on top of those cloud services that are easy to use has really enabled everyone to collect much more data and, and a lot of different data points. And, and you see that really across uh, almost uh, all industries and, and, and all businesses. And that in turn has really started to kind of feed into this uh, growth of the, the data segment in, the, in this industry and all of us, I know on a, almost seems like day to day, but, uh, but you look at the charts on the year by year and what are the new technologies that are coming up uh, and anything from databases to streaming systems to AI applications and visualization, data visualization pieces. Um, we see that, uh, um, sorry, what happened there? Let me do this again. Um, um, and we see we see that um, uh, um, um, kind, of, kind of that that ecosystem continues to grow and become very more and more complex, especially around data pipelines that need to connect all these pieces uh, um, and, and together. And, and there's really a you know, growth of the number of different uh, 
components and subsystems that need to be connected. And along with that, as all of this growth has also, also fed into kind of the scarcity of the engineering talent that's out there, especially if you're not like a core tech company, uh, there's limited number of people who are great at, at working with data and data engineering. And that's become kind of uh, more difficult to find. Um, and then finally, also kind of along with these are a couple of ideologies that have uh, become much more um, prevalent across industries. Two key ones, one around data democratization um, that we all hear about, and people mean slightly different things uh, with that, but at its core, it's really about uh, uh, data decentralization. So um, if, if you like, yeah, even so within each company, forget the, the industry, within each uh, company tended to be, um, that maybe maybe the the engineering piece, uh, pieces or product development would uh, would use use data, but now you see that it's almost any function. So there's like a finance side has become much much more. But even even beyond that, you look at anything sales and marketing. You look at even legal or HR things you would maybe not think about that a few years ago. Have become data is a big part of what they do and really critical for everyone's um, um, day to day jobs. So it's really, uh, really you know, embedded everywhere. And then more recently in the last couple of years with advancement in AI and AI and ML techniques out there, um, that too, and I'm looking back at the beginning of my, my career, maybe ML was more related to search ranking or doing some recommendation. That's you know, where, where I got uh, most familiar with it. But if you look at that within the gaming world around personalization and, and gaming is really this, um, interesting mix of um, engineering kind of artists and business all coming together and then in the last couple of years even when you look at the artist side of uh, um, the house you see a, a really kind of growing um, use of ai based tool even for things like content generation or animation where, where they're using it's becoming more critical kind of use those tools that in turn use the data that's generated by the company and its and its product so it's re really kind of the whole thing has become uh, very complex and all of that become kind of challenging and interesting, but also difficult challenges for everyone who's building data pipelines and using uh, that data. So every, any, everything from kind of latency in SLAs to quality of the data to compliance and how making sure how these things work. And obviously that's really all about orchestration and, and the you know, limited number of people who can build really great orchestration system. Obviously, Airflow has been huge in this and enabling everyone to do that. But there's a you know, few people that can manage it well and, and kind of help it contribute to it, as a lot of you are here. And that really is, it means a growing need for having a managed service that just works. So where majority of them, the engineers that are in these businesses can actually focus on using the data and providing the, the services that are needed between their businesses. So this really, really powerful ecosystem that's uh, that's been growing and helping everyone has very, become very complex to integrate and, and operate. Um, so at uh, astronomer over the the last year we've been thinking a, a lot about so what that means and what are the problems that we should be helping with and what what are the areas we should be focusing on um, around uh, orchestration and really think of it around three things so one there is the build aspect which is to really simplify the development of the pipelines and, and workflows and help people you know, easily build those um, workflows and second, once they have that, uh, to be able to run that in an efficient and reliable way uh, um, and, and just not have to be worried about it all the time, about are things running as I expected or not. And then there's the observability angle about uh, being easily able to look at what is happening um, in the ecosystem and the pipelines and be able to look, maybe do op optimization and getting as much information uh, visible to you as, as, as you're using that. Uh, so looking uh, kind of at the high level around what we've built around our cloud service, um, you can think of it really as three planes. So there is um, the control plane, uh, which is really the interfaces to our systems and the core logic and, and the state of the, the service itself. And the, then there's a data plane um, where, where our runtime run, run, run or runtime, what, what I mean by that is really basically airflow I'm going to pieces around it, where Airflow is actually running. And then there's a, the data services themselves, which our user or customers uh, would, would have their data systems and where their data is actually um, um, stored there. So look, looking at a little bit you know, deeper around what, what that means. So as a, as a user, as a, um, 
the control plane is where you're directly kind of interfacing with and, and using, and this is where you would manage kind of your internal users across the organization who has access to what, which part of the data or what, what they can do, where the metrics show up, as, as well as managing the deployments and the environments that are associated with that. And the data planning is actually in the cloud of the customer. So this is where we would, uh, there are ways from, so we developed those pieces around the control plane. You were able to deploy uh, Airflow or runtime in, into the appropriate place within your, your cloud. And then that would in, in turn send back metrics to back to the control plane. And, and then obviously this, this data plane also needs kind of this um, private and secure connectivity uh, to the, the, the data systems and the data that the, that the customer um, uh, is, is running. So just wanted to, um, in the brief time that we have here, focus on some of the problem areas that, that we, we see. I can obviously talk about this for many hours, but I wanted to focus on three things here. So, so one, first around kind of onboarding and initial productivity, um, uh, um, second around scalability, and, and also around the observability. Um, so, um, so around onboarding itself, so one thing that we hear a, a lot are, um, from our customers and, and, the, and the user base is that initial setup uh, of, of Airflow is actually quite burdensome. And you can think about a lot of uh, users uh, in, across uh, all kinds of companies and, and uh, industries. They may not even forget about the like, experience with Airflow. They may not even have used any open source tools and or they not may not have any experience with, with the cloud and Kubernetes and how to set set things up so they have a foundation about where, where they they run things. And then even when, when people set things up, there's some kind of continuous overhead on engineering time that's um, needed. So one around kind of, as a community with our Airflow, I think we've done a great job of accelerating what, what is there and improving the orchestration engine. But that does kind of create you know, this adoption um, overhead around understanding what the versions are, what the patches are, which one do you need, uh, what what are the differences, and what changes do you need to to make to your system? So that's one piece I would like to reduce that on on, on the users, and then around the entire ecosystem, the complex piece that I talked about, a lot there can be lots of failures that are then connected to the orchestrator, and it's not even a lot of times orchestrators issue, but if something goes up and down. Um, it impacts the entire business or lots of parts of, of the of, of the organization, and and kind of how do we solve that to that become you know easy to detect and easy to um, to mitigate if 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 cases come up. So with Astro, it really focused on you know, of optimizing that provisioning piece of of being able to uh, deploy the runtime in in any cloud and region that that. Uh, is relevant to, to each customer. So uh, people can have that data plane and put it where they need. And all they need is just a cloud account and with some permissions for us to be able to provision things uh, in there for them. And with that, you're able to very quickly you know, bring up an instance of uh, uh, our runtime and even have, have multiple you know, isolated environments really with a few clicks. Uh, in, in minutes, for example, a, a lot of most people would want a separate dev test and prod environment. So you can very easily just bring those up uh, very quickly. Whereas if people were doing it themselves, it'd probably multiple rounds of figuring out what actually needs to go there. Um, and another angle around um, people want to tie their development environment um, and kind of what they're doing and being able to push things to production. So we have this uh, great CLI, which is open source that you can use to integrate with your own CI, CD and, or, or your local environment where just a, a couple of commands, you can do Astro deploy and, and you just take kind of what you've de developed on your local environment and just have it run in production or what, whatever um, uh, instance that's that's relevant, and obviously all of these. I mean, the key part of a managed service is that we are monitoring all these pieces, the, the the different planes, the different components that are there, the databases, and and we make sure that they're running all the time. So in the cloud, nodes go up and down. You have transient network failures. There's resource kind of availability constraints that come up. So if anything goes wrong. You have a lots of monitoring, spend a lot of time to make sure we have detection and alerting. So if 
a lot of it fixed automatically. And then if there are pieces that cannot be in these escalations, they come to astronomer and someone on our team, you would have, will, will wake up and make sure things are uh, fixed uh, at, at, at any time. And as a customer, you don't have to worry about any of that. And instead can focus on uh, building and, um, your business logic and applications. Moving on to um, scalability. Um, so a couple of angles, I think scalability for successful businesses come in uh, multiple ways. So one is obviously you start a, a data platform maybe as a startup or a small product and that grows. Uh, and so th there's more data to collect and more things to, uh, more pipelines to build. So and we all know there's always business questions come up, you answer one and then 10 other questions come after that. And that's a good thing. That means that everything's growing and, and, and more important kind of data points or decisions need to be made. Uh, but that does do, kind of make the, the management of the orchestration obviously needs to be able to scale kind of in, in the same ways uh, fast. And then another angle is also maybe it's a large organization and, and a team's adopts airflow and and kind of sets it up to help them succeed uh, but that fairly quickly gets recognized by other teams or, or dependent teams or people who are also interested to grow uh, and then how you scale that up or maybe initially you thought i, I have this well-known um, kind of scope of uh, where i need orchestration but very quickly expands to be much larger that um, that person or small team doesn't know about and it's hard to kind of scale and serve a, a much larger uh, organization. So, so um, with Astro, we obviously kind of understand that and want to have a solution that um, kind of lets you both scale in terms of users and teams that are using it, as well as the you know, data use cases and an amount of data and, and different uh, pipelines that you need to build. Uh, so our control plane, uh, so one key thing to do there is obviously to have a, a pretty robust and well thought out kind of information architecture and access management kind of our back around that to, to know that people will want to have groups set up that where certain areas of data may be sensitive and one team only has access or a certain group of people, others are widely and how do you kind of set that up that it's easy to to construct and adjust as, as businesses uh, move. And, and then, so we have uh, kind of a workspace concept that we have where you can um, group things together very easily and kind of set those permissioning um, up. Um, um, and then as well as, kind of, as you know, organizations grow, as I mentioned, many, many uh, different use cases come up. You may want to have you know, many instances of Airflow actually running because there, there are different needs and, and it's very easy with Astro to set up the hundreds of instances and really on one page monitor and see what is going across all of those. And again, you know, we allow you to kind of set those uh, data planes again in any cloud region, the VPC connections to the, to the actual databases and so on. So that's one of one angle where you're making sure things are um, scalable. And, and the second thing around kind of the amount of resources um, that are used uh, by, by orchestration. So our runtime is definitely engineered with cloud in mind and auto scaling built in. Uh, so as an example, as an example for each of the deployments, um, we look at you know, what the workers, are, all the tasks that are running, how, how many are running, how many are queued and what that behavior looks like. And then we can scale based on um, that data that's internally uh, uh, um, collected. So, so for example, in, in a lot of places, let's say the, at the close of a day, there's a whole bunch of uh, metric computations or, or jobs that, that are that pipelines that need to run. And that creates a huge bump in the amount of resources that are needed. But once those conclude, then you can actually scale down and make, make sure um, those resources are available um, elsewhere. And we do that all of that automatically and that's handled for us and nothing for the for the users and customers to um, to to worry about, um, and then as I mentioned, obviously this is all Airflow based. So a lot of the advancements, or all the advancements that that come with Airflow, are also um, kind of leveraged within Astro. So um, deferable task being the obvious uh, one that was um, just came out, and there's a good talk by, by uh, Andrew Godwin on the topic uh, in this summit. Um, so make sure you catch that. Uh, um, but that's Part of Astro and in, in, in even going forward, anything that comes up, it, it's integrated and included uh, in, in, in Astro itself. So there's a lot of efficiencies that comes uh, from that automatically as well. And then moving to uh, 
observability. Um, so what, really, this this is um, somewhat an unsolved problem to me, you know, industry wide, so, which is with, with airflow um, and, and overall again, airflow and being best in class. You have a good view of what is happening in a particular pipeline that that you built and and what's what's happening within within that but really kind of looking across the entire uh, you know ecosystem and and the pipeline dependencies and actually the data dependencies um, that are there it's very difficult to really understand um, kind of the lineage of the data and and what's impacting each other and what those dependencies are and what happens that that causes you know the lack of that information makes it slow to react to fix things and it leads into poor um, data quality um, and in order to to solve that so what what we've done and one thing is uh, also with our um, series c announcement um, and we, uh, we announced that we acquired datakin this uh, great company that have been the the drivers of open lineage and we brought bringing in lineage and orchestration together and all of us are now astronomers and working together on astro and that what that gives us is really not only we have this uh, single view of pipelines around you know, hundreds of pipelines running what what is happening between them but you can very quickly kind of dig in and look at the operational lineage uh, visually around, okay, if a problem happened at this stage, what is the impact on the downstream and what, what else do I need to look for? Or the when someone's trying to investigate about, okay, so there's, I see a problem here, where, where, what is the actual root cause? And where did that uh, problem initiate? You can kind of trace it upstream and see what's happen happening. And as well as getting a lot of um, fast level resource visibilities and things you may want to optimize over time and, and get that and having all those things together um, really lets you kind of resolve the outages faster and uh, make sense of the dependencies that they're there so I mean, a quick example from the gaming world um, where i was so um the most critical is a time for data for games is actually in those first few days that the game launches, even hours, let's say first few days, that tends to be the, the largest number of players that are coming to a game. It's a huge spike. There's, I don't know, marketing spend behind it. And, and there's lots of unknowns at that, at that time. And it's also the riskiest time as far as data quality and the data pipelines working because nobody has been really looking at the uh, data as deep and at, at, the, at those volumes when that happens. But those things combined makes it very, very critical to be able to detect any problems and resolve them as, as, as fast as possible. And the way the games are built and the complexity of them, so you can imagine there's a team that's working on gameplay, there's a team that's that's working on maybe the, the microtransaction, the financial side of the game, there's a platform side that's looking at building the data pipelines, and, and there's many teams that are in a, in a where there's a marketing data that, that the marketing team is tracking. And all these things are combined together. Um, and it's when a problem shows up, it's very difficult on that environment to figure out, okay, which team did which part of the pipeline, what data is, is it the data pipeline? Is it the game itself? Is it the application? And, and, and this is just one example. So I don't think it's, this is not limited to the gaming industry, but anywhere else that you have a product launch with a ad spend attached, or you're making a change in features of some product and you wanna see what the change was. Um, it becomes there are these critical points where you want to very quickly uh, figure out where the problem was and trace them. And having this lineage and orchestration together and being able to visualize that really enables that and Astro enables that to to happen very quickly. And we're very excited. You know, there are starting points of getting this out, but kind of continuing this and making that uh, that piece uh, much uh, easier to do that than before. And and the beauty around this is also this is possible without you know requiring code changes uh, from the pipeline builders and people who are building the uh, working on the data. So uh, see within Airflow we have the operators that are connecting um, to the external data systems uh, and are working there. And what we've done is basically taking this open lineage package and and putting it within our runtime. So that's that's automatically extracting. Uh, Lot of information around um, how the tasks are, are, are running and, and the lineage metadata that's associated with that and, and bringing that together. So what happens is um, within a data plane where the, the runtime is running, so all of this data is extracted and, and collected and then that is in turn passed to the control plane. So where you get all these visualizations around lineage and be able to 
uh, track things um, down as well as having um, data quality monitoring you see spikes that are happening on the on the data itself and that that again having these things together uh, makes great sense and it has great uh, great value for whoever is um, is using the system uh, so to just to conclude uh, here um, you know, uh, we wanted to kind of quickly walk you through this to, to show you how Astro is providing productivity for the team, that runtime and really providing optimization around how things are running in the cloud and scaling factors and the visibility pieces around lineage and observability in general we're doing and having this integrated managed platform that makes things much easier and much have much more um, overhead for all the, all the teams and data users out there. Uh, I know I didn't have kind of a uh, time to really go on into demos uh, um, on this, but the team is ready. So I think there's a button on, on below that below here, but you can go to our website, astronomer.io slash get started. And there's a form there you can sign up for demo and the team is happy to walk you through and talk you through um, any areas that's, uh, that's related to you uh, or is of interest of, um, of you. Um, and then just um, one final final shameless plug as well. Uh, we are continuing to grow and we're hiring both in engineering and uh, other functions of, of the company. So what I talked about and, and orchestration is interesting to you. Please do con uh, contact us and reach out. We'd be happy to, to connect with you. So with that, uh, thank you. Thank you for your time.